Our needs preceded us, and soon the camel train was arriving at our base camp. Our days were filled with protests of the patient beasts who seemed to sense the dangerous journey before them. At this time, may I express my appreciation to the one man whose patience, sympathy, and understanding more than anyone else made our expedition possible. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Norman Wilkes, the president of Southern University. The camel is, like most patient souls, more than a little stubborn, and the packing developed into an endurance contest between the beasts and the attendants. It's too bad this young man wasn't a few years older. I'm sure he could have solved the entire problem. these people, ladies and gentlemen, bear in mind that at one time in history, on the Genghis Khan, they ruled the world. And that reminds me of another unsung hero, a man whose industry and devotion were responsible for the photographic records of our journey. Charlie Frazier, our cameraman. Uh, but at last, even the camels were subdued and we started on our trek. A journey that is to uncover the tomb of an emperor and bring to light one of Earth's great secrets. Followed days of monotonous sameness as we plodded onward into the desert. Broken only by occasional visits of our plane, which faithfully flew along our route, delivering mail, needed supplies, and bringing back our sick and injured. We had a signal arranged to tell them when we wanted them. You must realize that this is more than a travelogue. We have all the elements of drama, promised reward, obstacles to overcome, even a suggestion of romance, which explains the frequent trips of our airplane. My daughter Louise is with the uh, caravan, and Tommy Dean was piloting the plane. Our objective was a hitherto undiscovered country across the mountains. As we started to climb, the temperature dropped precipitately until we were in the snow country. As you can see by the way the camels are floundering, this is not the easiest part of our journey. But at last the summit was reached, and we began to send toward our objectives. I promised you all an interesting surprise. Here it is, the discovery of the Emperor's tomb, whose whereabouts had remained a mystery for centuries. The shock of discovery was too much for sudden realization after the hardships of our journey. 
but gradually the enormity of our find possessed us. We called to each other in our excitement and rushed into the tomb. Our Chinese bearers had warned us of a curse on the tomb. I can't say as to that. I only know that our troubles began from that moment. A violent windstorm descended upon us, threatening our camp. We all worked hard to combat the elements, buoyed by the success of our expedition. Mason, our co-pilot, seemed very much moved. He started out to revisit the tomb, but he must have got lost in the treacherous storm. But by morning, he had not returned. The wind increased in violence. The searching party returned without Mason. I would like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to Mason, this gallant member of our party who did so much to help achieve our success. Our Chinese bearers became fear-stricken as the storm grew worse. I was faced with a horrible decision to wait and endanger the lives of our whole party or press on. I decided on the latter course. 